Welcome back to Stonopolis, episode 13, and this time I shall press record. Uh, I've been doing, a, well, I've been playing for roughly about 20 minutes before I realised I hadn't pressed record. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go over some of the things that should have been in the episode that I've now done off camera. So let's quickly go over those. Um, I've been making more steel and I've put the slag into this drawer here. I do that manually, so I'm making steel blocks at the moment. I uh, don't think anything's changed around this particular bottom area, but up here, definitely changed. So our four furnaces that we had here, now running on this one resourceful furnace. This is doing everything from gold to the iron to the tin. Um, and so on. Now I'm going to change this obviously because we don't need it like this. Just one important thing to note on this. Um, if you're using a hopper underneath, on the input side here, block off the hopper otherwise the dust will go straight through and out. Um, it, it doesn't just pick from this side so yeah that's on the input side this button. Just click this so it's disabled. Uh, the rest as you can see here I have got all ticked, so that's okay. Um, I'm interested to know what happens when this fills up, whether the furnace stops or whether it carries on and just voids this, but we should be sorting that out in this episode. And this this one furnace, by the way, this had a huge backlog in here of um, iron dust, um, solved all that problem. I had a, a backlog of gold dust in this chest from the output of the crusher. That's all solved. Some of it are processed manually. Um, and some just went through. So there's no blockage anywhere now. The other thing that I have done is I've added the quartz mesh. So all these four strainers and these two strainers. So when the... I am, there are some iron ones left in some places. When they run out, the quartz mesh will take over. But that's just about to pop, that one. And if we look in our output from our assembler, which makes our meshes, you'll see all the iron ones have now gone. So there's that. Um, this here, now I've noticed that this strainer here is the slowest one. So what I did is I took the upgrade out of this one and swapped it with the upgrade that was in this one. So as you can see now, this was actually full of um, not netherrack. Sorry, this this was full of netherrack. So you can see now that it's starting to dwindle down it, and this will make it slower than this will use it up. So hopefully this will now catch up and and process a lot of this netherrack that's in here. Um, so that's the sturdy everything that's in here, which is a lot faster at processing, even though it doesn't give as much back as what the everlasting input upgrade does. Uh, certainly faster. The other thing I did was, as you notice, the latex system that was here, that got moved. I moved this up over here, as I said I would last episode. Um, we're just taking the water straight out of the cloche lineup to put in here. I did add some stone masking. Now this is just to stop this particular machine from using basically all, all the latex up. Now I know it it's, can store 16 more in here, so if I need, we're going to need to use some latex, um, which brings me to that tank that I made last episode. It was the Skystone tank, which is the AE2 one. I think I ended up putting it in here. Yeah, that one. When I broke it, it loads all the contents, so don't use those, the, the use ornament, unless you're using it in a static place. Uh, I've got a better idea for fluid solutions, so we shall get around to it. Um, so that's the fluid extractor which is powered. On the back of this, uh, sorry, on the side of this is our transporters. So that's moving the latex into the latex processing unit. And then that then is producing the dry rubber. And this node here is keeping the block placer full of this uh, magenta colored log that we're making in here. And lastly, what I've done is I've added some upgrades to all these drawers. 
Um, the quartz, redstone, and lapis have had gold upgrades applied. All the rest have had copper upgrades applied to them. So they will store a lot more now. Now, obviously, this, this particular orange one here is not going to go up because this one's now making the magenta logs for this system here. So I think that's just about everything caught up for. Uh, we're still on a positive for power. We're not running out of power anywhere. Uh, I'm going to leave these ones that make the charcoal uh, because they literally just run these two. Uh, I will change this slightly to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. Um, it looks a bit, yeah. <laughs> um, I did change the top hopper for a normal vanilla hopper instead of the wooden one because that's only got one slot, whereas this has got five, which allows multiple dusts to come in on this node here. Um, so this node, oops, this node basically allows old gold, iron, tin and copper to come in. And then they go into the chest and that node down there takes the ingots out. But I, I watched this for about an hour or so and it, it keeps up spot on and that's without any upgrades. Uh, we can put upgrades in here to make this faster and more efficient. Um, but as you, if you hover over this progress bar in the middle there, you can see it only uses 40 FE a tick. So it's not a power hog. Um, don't think I did anything else. What's in my inventory? Um, all the spare filters from removing those over there. Don't think I did anything else. Nope. Right, so let's see where we are with the quests. Now, we were on the latex chapter. I did say I was going to make this blade off camera, and, and I didn't actually make it. So we'll make that now. It's just a stick and a couple of plastic. Um, I processed all the plastic out, out of the latex processing unit when I moved it, and that's what we ended up with, around 25 plastic. Now, for this, it takes these heart containers. So default damage is 8, as you can see there. Um, we want some bronze for this. And some more containers. Oh, wow. Okay, have we got any of those? Oh, ha. Uh, what's in the middle? Oh, pig iron. Um, I think I've got a couple of stacks of that laying around, haven't I? Yeah, that should do. And then we want some iron. Uh, some more bronze. Might as well keep going till we use it all. I don't know if there's an upper limit for these um, heart, co heart containers. Um, so let's try and add them in. So you shift and right click. Oh, right. So it has, the, it's only 10 to a stack. So you can only put 10 of each color in. Um, I don't know how you get the next ones. Ooh, melted yellow heart. Melted red hearts. Right, so we furnished the red ones. So what's that damage that added? Plus 20 attack. Right, okay. I think that'll do for now. <laughs> um, the only thing we really need that for is for killing the wither. Okay, that completed that quest. Then there's only the conveyor belt at the bottom, so unless this is an unlock somewhere else, I can't see us actually doing that. Um, we don't really need to do that. We need to do some of the applied energistics, um, but not much. Uh, I'm not going to... I don't, don't know whether to do this chapter on camera or not yet. Um... But the fluid sieving is the next important one. But to get into this, I believe we need some of the Applied Energistics chapter doing. Uh, uh, there is something somewhere that needs the Applied Energistics. Ah, there we are. Look, the engineer, engineering processor. 
uh, to make the simple machine frames. So we do need to do that. So we need to do the inscriber. So let's quickly go through the applied energy logistics chapter at the top here. So there is the inscriber. So we need to go quite a ways down. Um, and in fact, the engineering process is all the way down here. So, yeah. So this is going to be primarily what we're going to do this time. I didn't really want to do this on camera because everybody knows about applied energistics. Um, it's nothing new, but if you are new to it, then I suppose that might help you. Um, certainly this pack does things differently uh, than the normal route. So first things first, take some of your nether quartz and strain it in purified water. Now we already did that. That gives you certus quartz. Now I am going to take another stack. And I need to keep my eye on that furnace for filling up with this essence fluid. Now I'm going to take a couple of stacks because nether quartz is used a lot in applied energistics. So we shall pop this in here. Just make sure that strainer is good enough. Yeah, anything above a tier one. We'll leave that in there. We'll pop those in there and let's see what's next. So Certus Quartz Crystal, you need a blast furnace for. Now the blast furnace or blasting is, is the vanilla blast furnace. You can't do it in that. Um, this, this one doesn't have a recipe for it. So we need to make a normal vanilla blasting furnace. Pretty straightforward, smooth stone, which is just furnace stone. Uh, some iron and, and a furnace in the middle, which I've got spares of. And we'll pop it just here above the fuel that we're going to be using. So let's take um, let's take sixteen and we'll cook that. Now you can see it's fairly quick. You don't have to hang around much or long for this before you get Certus Quartz Crystal. Um, we are running some more Certus Quartz in here. In fact, let's take half of that and pop it in there. Have we got another upgrade? So we'll pop that in there. And we need to make the charger, which basically uses two of these crystals and five iron. You can automate the charger. Um, you input through the top and output through the bottom. So any side will do for power on this. And hopefully that node is not going to be in the way. Oops, dropped in a hole. <laughs> and you can see there that it's got now got power and what you do is you put these crystals in and they will get charged up converted into charged certus quartz crystals which completes our next quest gives us three more and then what you need to do is take some redstone I already had some on me um, some nether quartz and the charged crystal quartz and throw them in water and what they do is convert to fluid crystals these and that's our next one right so the only thing so far obscure with this pack is obviously the way that we make certus quartz dust uh, and turn that into certus quartz crystal 
um, is the inscriber process. Because normally what you do is go out in the world and you'd, you'd find meteors and then you dig through the, into the centre of the meteor and that's where you get the presses from. Well, in this pack, you have to make them. So the silicon press is just iron around fluid crystal. And that completes that quest. Uh, and then it wants us to make some silicon. So silicon is made by smelting the Certus Quartz dust. Now you're going to need quite a lot of that. Um, how much have we got? It's in here. Let's do all that because we're going to need quite a lot of it. And we've got some more in here already, so that's okay. We'll keep this running. Let's make some steel rods. So in our straining with eroding water, we'll just throw a couple of steel ingots in there. And hopefully that will make enough rods for what we need because the inscriber has pistons in it and we all know that the piston as a steel rod in there. If you're wondering where we got the slime balls from, you uh, strain magma creams under purified water and you get the magma creams from the mob spawner spawning actual magmas so if you look at the magma cube spawn egg you'll see that you needed the blazing fluid and you right click the summoning block with blaze powder and that's how you got your magma cream And that's our inscriber. Let's get some silicon. Um, now the inscriber is fully sided, but I'm just going to slap it down next to that. Uh, and I'm going to use the top of the power. And what you do with the inscriber is you put the press in and then each press has a material requirement. So to make the silicon or printed silicon, you just put the silicon in. This recipe here is to duplicate it should you have more inscribers. It's just a block of iron. Now I don't think silicon itself has any other use. Well, not for us yet. So we'll do all that printed silicon. Now, this is a relatively newish thing, the fact that it can take stacks of. It used to only take one at a time, so you can do stacks at a time. Um, I think that's this button here. Now, I don't know whether that's vanilla applied energistics or not, but it saves a lot of messing around with hoppers and stuff. So let's go back to our quests and see where we are now. So we've done the inscriber, done the silicon. We're about to get our printed silicon. So that should do for our printed silicon, uh, which unlocks all these other ones here. Now, we're, we're trying to get to this engineering processor down here because that will give us the necessary components for the simple machine frame, the engineering processor. So 
So the in engine in the inscriber one requires these rapid shards. And the way to get those is to make the budding rapist. And that is by sticking an empty budding stone in the charger. Now we're going to need a cloche for this. Well, you don't actually need a cloche for it, but it would be easier to have one. Don't think we've got anything that we can remove. Um, do we really need all that sugar cane? Do we really need green coloured logs? The leaves, basically, uh, they gave, gave us the sugar cane, cactus and bamboo, which we've now got. So, to be honest, this one here is redundant. So I'm going to remove that one. And in here we shall put... Oh, I need to convert that first. Um, I'll need another drawer, but I shall take this one with me. Pretty sure we're not using that anywhere. And the simplest way to tell would be if there was green logs or leaves on this. So the sticks, yes. But we have three more there with that I've got sticks in. So yeah, not a problem. We'll remove the green sapling. Now, I forgot to convert this block. Need to put it in the charger. There we have it. Oh, forgot the drawer. Now, the only thing this gives over are those shards. So we don't need a, a massive storage for that. Um, what have we got? I've got a f that's the leaves one, isn't it? Uh, do I not have... Right, well, let's get in that. Let's have a look at this. So that's that quest. Oh, we do have a coloured sapling over here, so don't forget to do that. I'm guessing that that's for these rapid shards around a sapling. It is. That will complete that quest, which gives us the three more that we need. Now we do need some more of these. They're in various different recipes, but mainly we need two for the engineering press here. Oh, that's interesting. There's no animation for this one. I mean, it is working, just no animation. Got animations for the other uh, budding shards. These ones look... Yeah, you can see they grow. But the, the actual stone itself is putting, well, this doesn't show up. So therefore the cluster growing is, is not going to show. Right, there's the two that we need. Did I pick those up? Yep. So for our sapling, it's just any sapling. That gets us light blue. Don't forget all these sapling colours, they're going to unlock the coloured caves, or the blocks in the coloured caves. Um, we are making, what were we making? I forgot what we were making. Oh yes, the Inscriber Engineering Press. We've got everything for that now. And this uses uh, the Rappi Shard. So normally this is a diamond in vanilla. I believe it's a diamond for the engineering one, but we have no access to diamonds at the moment. So we do need more of those shards. Did that complete? Oh, it did complete the quest. Uh, four will do. We don't need a massive amount to keep going. So what you do with these is in the inscriber, take the silicon press out, put the engineering one in and your rapid shards. Now that gives you the printed engineering circuit, not the final thing. Let's just complete that quest before we do the next part. And the next part after that is to convert them into an engineering processor, 
which requires the printed engineering circuit we've just made, redstone and the printed silicon that we made. We need to take that out, put in redstone and put in the silicon. And that gives us four. Now I'm going to put the printed silicon in here along with the other AE2 stuff, which I think that's it. Yep. Because we can now crack on with the next chapter. Oh, by the way, the entropy manipulator down here at the bottom, this is actually quite a good thing to make when you get the necessary parts up. Um, Fluix dust, you just inscribe, using the inscriber, the Fluix crystal that we made. Um, this has some major uses in converting uh, blocks to blocks. So you, this is how you get your ice. Now, it is currently unfamiliar, um, but you could quite easily use it on the blocks or the water here. Oh, ooh, I nearly walked into that. That was close. You could use it on these water to create ice without a problem, even though it is unfamiliar. I believe that should still work, but more importantly, it's how you get your obsidian. Uh, because I believe that if you use this on lava, yeah, you get obsidian. Now, we don't know if we've got a current way of breaking the obsidian. That might be another problem in itself. But yeah, very useful to have. But for the time being, we're going to leave this chapter here and we're going to move on to fluid sieving. Now, just before we do that, let's just check our furnace here. It hasn't filled up yet or has filled up yet. Right, it's very close. So filling up is going to answer one question on whether this stops functioning or whether it just carries on functioning and voids the essence. So we need to know that. And I've got a fluid storage that probably gets overlooked nine out of ten times. So I'll keep an eye on that and we'll come back to that in a minute. Right, so what's next on fluid sieving? We need the dissolution chamber. Now the dissolution chamber is used for higher tier recipes. If you do press U on it for uses and click the tab, you'll see there's 25, well it's 50 recipes. Um, some of them are the lenses, so they're, they're pretty bog standard. Uh, but there are other things, <laughs> yeah, the nuke, um, that you can make, um, including the speed upgrades and energy upgrades for all the immersive uh, industrial foregoing machines. And you'll see there the advanced machine frame and the simple machine frame are made in this and that's what we're going to be using it for. And I told you last episode you're going to need latex in liquid form. And this is the reason why. Okay, so you're going to need it in liquid form there. So what I'm going to do, because we need that sooner rather than later, is I'm going to stop the export into the latex processing unit. It's getting dangerous around here. Um, just by clicking that, and what that will do now is the latex will stay in here. Now that is only a very small tank, so that's going to fill up relatively quickly. So rather than waiting for that essence to fill up, let's do what the fluid solution I had in mind for that now. And what that entails is need some buckets. is fluid drawers. Now I've never used these before, so these are brand new to me. So you have your single fluid drawer, your split and your four way. So we're going to do the single one because it's just latex. And let's just see how, well that tells you there at the top, 32 buckets and that's without any expansions in it. So yeah, much better. Much better and very easy to make fluid storage. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this just here. And I have a spare pair of the fluid transporters that we took off from down there that went to the other tank. And I'm just going to put one on there, one on here, and then indent the one that's going into. And that should now be filling up with latex, as you can see there. It's got a nice transparent window, so you can see when it's getting filled. And that, to me, is the easiest fluid storage solution that's in this bag. Right, so where do we go from here? Uh, let's make the dissolution chamber. Now, this is pretty straightforward now that we've made all this before. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make this. Now, you didn't see me make this before in this disassembler. So I took the barrel from down there, put it here. Now, this is set to input. So you take engineer's hammer and right-click it, and then that goes straight into the assembler and as you can see because we've got the output blocked and this is full it will stack up inside and then you can just pull it out from there and that is the whole barrel empty so one of these barrels if the 12 buckets worth makes a stack and a half of the treated wood. Now we've only got four millibuckets left in there, but I have been making some more coal. So we can pop that in there and then that will make some more creosote. How we're doing here, keep pulling that slag out. Could actually use a hopper underneath it. In fact, no, you can't. You can't automate this crude blast furnace. You have to upgrade your blast furnace. Right, so let's go back to what I was doing. And that's the dissolution chamber. Now we're going to need this somewhere close to where our fluid is. So I'm going to pop it up here. Now that's going to be a lot of running backwards and forwards with stuff because it really is a crafting machine. Um, I'm going to put it just... Oh, let's have a look. Where are we? Probably on top of there. And I've run out of the HV wire connectors so I'm gonna to have to make some more of those um, rather than put it there let's put it here didn't pick that up yeah now it'll become apparent why I'm gonna put it there move that torch forward one because we can use it to get the fluid out and back into that storage drawer, uh, to that drawer. Uh, it's mainly for putting it back in. So, yeah, this needs hooking up with power, so we'll do that from the top. Up to that one. Should be okay, so that's now got power. And the first thing we're going to make with it is the simple machine frame. Now this needs more gearboxes, so more treated wood. Um, but it does need 250 latex rubber. So hopefully this works. If it doesn't, I'm not quite sure how you get your fluid out of your drawers. It doesn't work. Uh, but seeing as this mod and this mod, as in industrial foregoing and functional storage, are modded by the same person, I buzz. Um, you would suspect that this will actually work. Yeah. So we'll stop that because we don't need that much. Now the question is, will it transfer it back? And the answer is, yep, sure does. So that is a lovely. We'll put some back in. We only need 250 for the time being. So stop. Uh, it's not the advanced one, is it? It's one before that simple. That's what we're making, the simple machine frame. Let's add that to our bookmarks. So we want two more gearboxes. Now, I might run out of, of treated wood here. Uh, 
Right, that's already turned all that. And that's only made eight buckets worth. And I think I've pretty much used all that already. Yeah, the problem with doing this is making coal. There's no alternative from doing the charcoal into coal via this route. So you need something to keep the life essence going to automate that chain. And that's easier said than done in this pack. So, unfortunately, Mr. Pigs, it's slaughtering time again. Um, I do have some mini charcoal already put into that. Uh, I mustn't forget that that is where I put the surplus iron plates for when they run out of making these. Right, we've lost... We've lost this again, so that must have burnt that one. So that must be the range at which that is setting fire to stuff. Um, let's just block that lava off and probably forget it's even there. Oh, wow. What? Hang on a second. That was so much life, life essence. Um, wow. I'm amazed, actually. If there's more carrots and some cobblestone. So I wonder how much one pig is. So let's let's see here. I had um, I had about two buckets worth. I only killed a couple. Right, so I'm going to make some more coal off camera because this is a time-consuming process. We're governed by the speed of this to make the coal, and then we need to produce or put that coal into the coke oven to make the creosote. So I'll do that little bit off camera and then I'll come back to you when I've got uh, some more treated wood done. So let's have a quick look. This is currently empty. If I kill one pig... Oh, that's half of us. <laughs> so two pigs basically fill this up to, to the top. Two hours later. And I'm back after processing more coal and getting more creosote and we are now ready to make our first simple machine frame so we have our latex fluid in and you should be able to just oh i was going to say you should be able to just click it in but obviously not unless we've got something missing uh what was along the bottom uh two iron and the processor And there we have it, processing. And then we have our very first simple machine frame. And this is full. And as you can see, it's still working. So that answers that question. Now, this essence is useful. You can turn it into player XP. Uh, but you'll also need it if you want to use the mob duplicator. So I'm going to set up a draw for that and then use the um, transporters to get it into a fluid draw similar to this. As you can see there, we've now got 27 buckets of latex and we don't need that much. So that one's actually turned off. Oh, it's that one that we need to turn off, not that one. And we'll turn this one back on. And that's the wrong way. It wants to go in there and out that way like so. And that will continue to make dry rubber. 
think 27 buckets is enough latex for what we need. In fact, it's way over what we need. Uh, I will create another drawer and use the transporters to push the essence across. Might as well save that. We can do that now. It's a pretty straightforward recipe. Wood all the way around a bucket. And then we just need to make the transporters, which uh, actually I'm going to pinch a pair of these. Not that one, I'm going to pinch this pair here. I'll put the drawer here and then we should be able to extract and insert like so. Yep. Don't forget these, you can upgrade them. Right, so that's our first simple machine frame. And if we collect that quest, we are then going into the animal section and I'm going to save that for the next episode because that's going to be quite a long one. And then we'll get into pink slime and then more advanced machines further down the line. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. Stay safe and I shall catch you next time. So goodbye for now.